So when I met my wife, I was in a one room. I didn't have a house. I didn't have anything. I didn't have money. I don't even think I had a bank account. Came a time where I didn't have money to pay rent. She would pay for my rent. It was crazy. This is how I met and fell in love with my stunning, incredible wife, Charisma. You know this and that. But what you do not know is this. And that it was on a Tuesday, 12 o'clock midday. My younger brother had a class. He didn't want to go to class that day. I remember I said to him, you have to go to class. You must go to class. We used to use this phrase, caparize. And I said to him, I might as well as caparize you to go to class. Just before that, I was in prayer and fasting. And I was praying for a wife. I was not praying for a girlfriend. I was praying for a wife. I understood scripture clearly when it said, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. I said to myself, I'm not continuing with the work of the Lord until I meet my wife. In the year 2010, during World Cup in South Africa, I had written down in my diary how I wanted my wife to look like, the number of kids I wanted, the, the kind of woman I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. So now, fast forward, we get to school. Remember, he didn't want to go to class. We are just talking about our business, you know, just talking about things that concern us. All of a sudden, I do not know what said to me, turn to your left. Because we passed so many classes and I never turned to the left or turned to the right. I was more focused. When I turned left, I believe it's God. Who can it be? Could not have been the devil. When I turned left, I saw this beautiful woman with black hair and black eyes. They had a class going on. And all of a sudden, I knew. I remember I turned and I said to my younger brother, I just saw my wife. And he looked at me and he laughed. He was like, what do you mean, your wife? I said, come and see. He came, I pointed, and I showed him. I said, that's my wife right there. And she was seated. It was during class. He looked at her, and I remember, I was like, mm, she's hot. That's what he said. Believe it or not, I forgot about his class, and he forgot about his class. And I said to him, I'm not moving until I talk to my wife. The class finished. Immediately, we saw her coming. She was not alone. She was with a lady friend. When she came out, you know, at that moment, I, was, I could not hold my excitement. It was as if she had known me and she had said yes and she was my wife already. The same excitement that I feel when I'm with her now was the same excitement, probably more, that I had when I actually saw her coming out. The way she walked, the way she carried herself, there was just so much dignity around this woman and I could not help myself but smile. Unfortunately, she didn't notice me or notice us. She just passed us with a friend, of course. Then again, I said to my younger brother, I'm going after her. I remember we went down the stairs. I just tapped her on the shoulder. She looked and I said, hi, my name is Mzwake. She introduced herself and she introduced a friend and I introduced my younger brother. Then I was like to her, look, I can see you ladies are in a hurry. Try to be a gentleman. By the way, I'm a gentleman. So I think she can attest to that. She can testify. <laughs> I said, look, ladies, I can see you guys are in a hurry. I don't want to keep you. Um, do you mind if I can have your number? And I remember she asked me, she said, my number's for what? I said, I feel there is something that I need to share with you. But because you're in a hurry, I might as well as get your numbers if that's okay with you. She refused. She said, no, I can't give you my numbers. And ladies and gentlemen, me being me, I didn't go nowhere. I didn't Kawa, I didn't look left, I didn't look right. I looked at her, I said, you know what? I'm not leaving here until I get your numbers. I remember she said, oh, well, you stand here. I said, I'm going to follow you. She laughed. Then all of a sudden she was like, okay, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I said, no, 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 I need your numbers. And the least you can do for me is to just maybe take my numbers. Then she took my numbers and she said, I'm going to text you tonight. Remember those days were the days of the Blackberry, when Blackberry just entered Everybody was so fascinated and excited about this new uh, app, uh, uh, phone, BlackBerry, right? Now, we had BBMs and we had WhatsApp. It was the early days of WhatsApp. 
WhatsApp was not famous at that time. Yeah, if I remember, it was not famous at that time. So very few people had WhatsApp. So most of us were using BBM. Now, I got home. I'm excited with my younger brother. So I was playing love songs. Brothers, sisters, I was in love. Before she even said yes or anything. The very same day, I'm waiting for a text. Every time, I'll get a notification. I'll check on my phone if it was my wife. Or let me say if it was her. <laughs> because by that, she was not my wife by then. I would check if it was her. And if it was not her, the moment I realized it was not her, I would not even respond to the text. If I didn't sleep. When I say I didn't sleep, I'm telling the truth. God is my witness. My younger brother is my witness. Morning came and um, only to find out that she didn't text me. Then when I woke up in the morning, I had some few things to do. We were helping first years to register. And around 11 in the morning, my younger brother came where I was. I was in a tent. You know, screaming his lungs out. I saw your wife. I saw your wife. I saw your wife. You know, <laughs> she was already my wife before she became my wife. Now you understand why the wisest man Solomon said, he who finds a wife finds a good thing, right? Not a girlfriend, not a woman, but a wife. I saw your wife. I saw your wife. That was my brother screaming. And I was like, where? He was like to me, by main gate. She had keys around her neck and I'm 100% sure she stays by main gate. I was excited. At that very hour, we left what I was doing. And we went to the house. I got two extra brothers with me and my brother. And I said to them, look, we are going to search house after house looking for this woman. Brothers, I'm serious. Ladies, sisters, gentlemen, I am serious. God is my witness. And my younger brother is behind the cameras. I'm talking right now. So he knows what I'm talking about. Well, I had to convince the brothers and i said to them i'm gonna get them plates we had so many places where they saw where they used to sell uh plates and we started now arguing should we go to dinero's should we go to white house should we go to cafeteria and the conclusion was let's go to white house because food there was a little bit cheaper and nice but then again one wanted cafeteria but we didn't agree with that because it was expensive and i was broke but not as broke as Moses when he broke the Ten Commandments, but I was broke. Maybe I had 200 rands in my account. Not sure. <laughs> Somewhere there. Because I had money to buy them plates, right? Now, we, we left and we had to pass by the school because to get to the other side, you had to double up, right? Use the school gates, the back gates, uh, the small gate. Now, we went and for some reasons, remember, I'm going to get them plates. To eat and after eating we go on a hunt what are we looking for what are we hunting we're looking for my wife right they don't know how she looks like me and my brother we know so they are accompanying us so that you know the search can be easy and simple all the way from the house to uh the white house we're looking at about 15 minutes walk so after seven to eight minutes walk i just went like you know what let me get you guys something here at cafeteria white house is far and I can afford. So I want us to eat here. And when we're done, we just go straight to Main Gate because Main Gate was, way, was closer to the cafeteria than the White House. Now, on our way, we are going to cafeteria now. We turn back. We go up. And just after we passed amphitheater, those that uh, studied in VUT will know what I'm talking about. As we are passing amphitheater, just on top, going towards cafeteria. I didn't see her. Right? This is where everything takes another turn. I didn't see her. My younger brother can see her. He thought I could see her. So I passed. My younger brother was like, you just passed your future wife like that. You're a chicken. That's what my younger brother said to me. So he thought I was scared to approach her. I was like, what do you mean? And then he showed me. So this. When I looked, lo and behold, I saw my future wife right there, my wife. And I was like, what? It was just, you know, amazing how it happened. I was like, you know what? <laughs> this is God. And my younger brother was like, okay, give us our money and we'll go buy food. You go deal with your wife. We helped you to get your wife and here's your wife. Go deal with your wife. And I was still, you know, contemplating and thinking. I was like, are you scared? Don't be a chicken, man. Go get your wife. I ran towards my wife and they came. I remember when I ran, they were behind me. Instead of going to get food, they just kind of followed me. After the gates, we had these gates that you tap, use your student card and then You'll go out. The moment she came out, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for a right opportunity because I can't just say hi. You know, I'm just waiting for a perfect moment. And 
this is where now the perfect moment was where when her friend went the other direction and she went the other direction and now she was on her own i was like what this is a good perfect opportunity for me i went after my wife and i tapped her on the shoulder i was like hi she was like oh hi she couldn't remember my name and she was like i'm like Mzwake. she's like yeah yeah i'll text you today i'm sorry i forgot i'll text you today i said nah i'm not leaving until i get your number brothers sisters it was crazy she insisted nope i'm not gonna give you my number but i will text you all right for some reason i just said you know what let me just give her this last chance then she left when she left and i went with the brothers for some reasons i was like nah i can't let my wife go this is my wife i know this is my wife she might not know about it but i know i tend i ran after her because at that moment there were two guys as well just behind her with songas talking in songa one of them was like no i'm taking her the other one was like no i would take her so because they speak songa i could hear them because i'm songa too i think that was god kind of speeding up or adding catalyst i don't know how to put it into the whole thing because when i heard them saying i'm taking her this other one is like i'm taking her and she was alone i ran and i passed the guys and i took her bag she was holding a bag and i just snatched her bag like that and she looked and she saw me and i just held her bag and she was like oh okay seeing that she was comfortable with that uh i was like okay now i think we we good with this lady right i introduced myself reintroduced myself my name is this and that and that and that uh you are really beautiful you know you look beautiful and you you look like an amazing person and i would really really like to be your friend I remember that's what I said. She looked at me and she asked me this simple question. Before any other thing, she said to me, are you born again? <laughs> she didn't say, are you a Christian? She said, are you born again? I was, I am born again. I am a minister. I was already a minister at that time. Remember, God called me at the age of 13 and started ministering at the age of 14. So I was already a minister. She doesn't know me. I'm not known at that time. Nobody knows me except me and those that were around me then i was like you know i was really happy you know when she said are you born again i was like tick because it means she's a christian it means she's born again she's a woman of god you don't have to deal with that again right so she asked me she was like are you born again then me being me i said no what does it mean to be born again right trying to be clear of course i am born again but i just wanted to see and hear her sunesis right and she started preaching to me. She started ministering. She didn't joke. I remember she said, for you and I to be friends, right? Uh, we need to speak one language. And she said it calmly. That my spirit, oh my goodness, this woman, oh Lord have mercy. Now, she said it in such a way that my spirit, you know, she was talking but I was not there, right? I was just seeing myself with uh, this woman laughing, you know, holding hands. And she started preaching to me. She said, do you want to receive Jesus? I didn't hear what she said. I had some of the stuff. My mind was not there. I said, yeah, yeah, I want to receive Jesus. And I lifted up my hands and she said, pray after me. And I did that. Some of you, you know the story uh, from my book. She said, okay, now you're saved. And uh, I want you to come to church with me. I said, okay, that's good. I remember I have my own church that I go to. At that time, it was soon after I was released from Christ Embassy. So we had a ministry. Yeah, we had a ministry going on. I had started a ministry at that time called um, uh, Youth for Christ because our ministry, Youth for Christ, started in 2011. Yes. I was like, okay, can I get your number? At least your number. She said, okay, you can get my number. Ah, I got her number. So I said, okay, I want to know where you stay. She said, not today. That's what she said. She said, not today. So you can turn from here. And then she, she turned me and I turned and I was excited. I have the numbers now. Ha, ah, brothers, sisters, ladies and gentlemen, when I got to my place, guess what? was the first thing that i did i was dancing when the brothers came they found me dancing i was excited i was all over the place not forgetting i was playing love songs i was playing love songs playing jazz it was just an amazing time and at that time you know uh, i called my mother and i told her i said mom there is this lady blah 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 knowing the kind of a person i am my mom was shocked and she was like wow if you say so I believe it's like that. All right. I texted her. 
hi hey this is who 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 i have your number remember oh yeah 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 look i i remember just trying to create conversation but mostly she was talking about god right and i didn't want to talk about god to be honest with you i wanted to know her like okay now i know you're a christian i know you're born again but let me know you you know and i didn't know how to ask her if she was in a relationship or not because every second it was about god i didn't have a problem with that i was excited but i felt like you know what let's talk about that a little bit later but she did not lower her value right but what she did was she caused me to come up to a standard so i had no choice but to come up where she was so i started you know engaging in those kind of conversations i remember she was talking about the power of the blood of jesus and prayer summits and all of these things god oh my goodness it was crazy now the following day we didn't sleep both of us were texting but she was talking about god right the morning uh i used to be classic then i didn't have but you know cleanliness was uh something that was in my dna still in my dna i love being clean all right so uh putting on my nice jacket and all of that during break i remember i i, I didn't have money but i offered to buy her lunch she came through to cafeteria she came with a friend and she saw me i was now wearing some nice blazer and you know trying to score some points for myself right and she kind of liked it remember i got a lunch bar we sat there i used to love table pool right like pool table and uh table soccer as well so after she ate with a friend i got them lunch both of them they ate and i said look i have a match there uh table soccer i played and i played she was watching she kind of fell in love with that oh wow and i was winning you know i think she kind of it was a double confirmation that with this woman on my side i would win and i'll forever win so i was winning when she was there and everybody was like wow this guy today is on fire no i was not on fire guys i had a support you know i was i i had to i had to prove a point then we went to the table pool she wanted to learn some few things i remember this is where now i was holding her hand and trying to show her how you hit the ball and it was just kind of fun you know then the following day i think it was friday it was friday they had prayer going on and she invited me to come for prayer i went to the chapel there was prayer we prayed and she was praying in tongues and people were praying knowing definitely that you know i'm born again super saved and sanctified but never satisfied but i was not praying because she would be shocked so you know how to pray yet you know i asked you a few days ago if you're born again or not because she she was acting like my mentor spiritually when it comes to spiritual matters right so she's praying there and i'm there and I, I i could feel uh you know the rivers of the living water flowing in my belly i felt prayer you know uh hitting the spirit of prayer just wanted to manifest but i was just trying to i was just trying to hold myself i would turn and just pray libro shakata and after church we went out she was like thank you for coming with me and all of that and i was like oh no thank you for inviting me saturday i didn't have plans and she asked me do you have any do you have plans i was like no i don't have plans she was like okay what about lunch is on me i want to go and buy some test books and all of that she told me that okay cool i don't know who had given me money but i had money i think i had 300 rand and then we went we passed by where they were selling books so when she got there two books were well, about 200 and something 270 something 274 279 so i had 300 i said don't don't worry it's on me so i got her books and she was so excited like oh okay this is something else right we went for lunch i didn't have money and i just said you know what today i'm not eating just have it yourself knowing that the money that i have can only pay for one person so i did that cut a long story short following monday now she went to class i went to class then after our classes we met again when we met we started talking then i got straight to the point now look this is who i am I'm not saying anything about the calling of god upon my life and this is where i'm going in life i think it's important for me to say this uh i didn't have money i didn't have i didn't have anything most people when they got to know me even those that came into my life for wrong reasons you know uh they came into my life because of who i was and what i had at that time so most people knew and 
me and a lot of people knew me while my life was already making sense okay because god blessed me from an early age i remember my first car my first first very first car was a mercedes benz coupe not funny mercedes mercedes benz that even if you buy it now you feel like you have made it in life not i'm not trying to be funny but i'm just being honest right here so take it with a good spirit i'm saying that with all humility so my first car was a mercedes benz and yeah so she she didn't come into my life because of that i didn't have any of those right i was as a matter of fact soon after i met her i had moved into a one room so when i met my wife i was in a one room right so i was in a one room i didn't have a house i didn't have anything i didn't have money uh, i don't even think i had a bank account well i did i remember i did right so very funny bank account so i started getting into the point look this is who i am this 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 and she kind of understood and she said to me look i need to speak to my pastor about this uh i'll come back to you and at that time when she said that then i gave her that opportunity too she went to speak to her pastor i think she came back to me on wednesday say look up my pastor says wants to speak to you i said oh okay um when the phone hello say how are you pastor said i like your voice i'm like oh wow that's how we connected he liked my voice and how calm i was on the phone and he asked me a few questions i remember the first question that he asked me was do you know the lord are you saved which church do you go to you know stuff like that then that was it uh you want to marry her or you want to waste her time i said look i want to marry her what do you do i do nothing i'm still a student <laughs> but he didn't have a problem with that he was a cool guy right and i spoke to my pastor as well about it she said give me 14 days <laughs> hey, that woman oh no 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 it was crazy i'm in prayer i'm praying about it all right i gave you 14 days but in my spirit i already knew that this 14 days is just the 14 days of confirmation already she knows she likes the kind of person i am right after 14 days she said look we good um i'm in love with you oh wow amazing wow now my life took another 10 right i remember um i had to invite her to church the moment she actually agreed a week after i invited her to church she didn't know that i was a pastor i was a man of god i was an apostle so i invited her to church she she she, she came early so i came a little bit late now here's the mystery we're not a lot of, it was not a lot of people it was a few people right few people as i entered people stood up and started clapping so she was confused why are people clapping when they see me and she saw me going to the front and i said then the next thing i was going to the pulpit she's confused i could see confusion she does not understand what is really happening right now is this some joke is this some prank what is this you know she, she was not comfortable at all she's looking at me and right there i stand in front of the people and i started opening the bible and i started preaching she shocked everybody's clapping everybody that day we didn't prophesy that much we prophesied one person i remember it was me and this brother and we gave a prophecy so it was the first time to see such kind of prophecy or rather not i'm not gonna say accuracy but the way the presentation of the prophecy baffled her right and she was shocked she didn't understand after church i went my way she went away then she texted me a lot of question marks like question marks then she wrote are you a pastor with question marks i was like yes i am she was like what i need to see you right now okay we met she was like are you a pastor i'm like uh, not a pastor but if you want to call me a pastor call me a pastor yeah i'm a minister that's what i said she's like no you can't justify it you're a pastor i'm like yeah i am it's, that's when now everything made more sense she was like are you telling me i'm gonna be married to a pastor i'm gonna be a pastor's wife i'm like so already in her mind, you know, the fact that she said, are you telling me I'm going to be married uh, to a pastor and by a pastor? I could see that this woman sees me in her future, right? I'm like, yeah. She was like, wow. So she was actually amazed and she was like, wow. So she told me that she always prayed for somebody who's going to be more spiritual than her, right? So she told me, she was like, wow. Are you serious? So she asked me about the prophecy. She was like, so you guys, how were you? prophesying like that then i said <laughs> the spirit of god she's like now nah, i understand the following day she asked me about it and i started prophesying upon her life it was amazing she was shocked she was baffled before you know it 
we were in love, like deeply in love. We started planning together. Uh, you know, we started doing things together way before we even got married, way before I even played Lobola. We started doing things together, planning together so that we don't grow apart. Because remember, if you guys don't plan together, review your goals together, you grow apart. So in order for you guys to grow together, you need to do everything together. So we established teamwork. And not only that, we established what we call a friendship environment where we will joke, where we will laugh about anything, right? Where we'll have a moment of us just being friends. So I, I believe that's the most important thing in relationships. If you want to be happily married or be happily in love with somebody, you must be friends and you must be husband and wife later but friends must come first so we're friends we used to love about everything i was broke i remember came a time where i didn't have money to pay rent she'll pay for my rent man she'll pay for my rent we 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 planned together i used to tell her this is what we're gonna have this is what we're gonna do and she'll see me you know putting some work i'm talking about effort towards the vision you don't just talk about it right you act on it you don't just say it out and sit around no you must do things that are leading you there, things that will slowly push you to who you want to be or to where you are supposed to be. And today we are married, happily married. We have got kids, uh, you know, so many kids around us. We've got three kids, two biological kids. We, we are happy. We run multiple businesses. Uh, we, we do a lot of things together. She has her things going on. I have my things going on. God is good. We love God. We love being a blessing to uh, people. And we are happy. You know, whatever you see out there, it's not something that we are acting it out or trying to. My, my wife is an amazing woman. You know, every time, every moment with her is just amazing. Even, even if I can call her right now, and just say something that is not funny to you. My wife will laugh about it. So she's a happy soul. That's it. That's how I met my wife.